Hello everyone and welcome to the first video in my Chrono Cross discussion series. I'm just going to jump right into it, not waste any time. Let's go ahead and take a look at today's agenda. Um, first of all, I'm going to be talking about my overall feelings of the game now that I've beaten it and have played a fairly significant way through New Game Plus and made some different decisions from those that I made in the first playthrough. Um, I'm going to get the Chrono Trigger comparisons and expectations discussion out of the way. <laughs> um, a lot of people who, um, when they come to talk about this game, you know, whether or not a person has played and loved Chrono Trigger before playing Chrono Cross um, will often have a significant impact on whether or not someone really enjoys Cross. So I'm going to let you guys know where I fall on all of that and get that out of the way before we move on just so that you know where I'm coming from. Um, we'll talk a little bit about whether or not I feel that Chrono Cross is a good sequel to Chrono Trigger. Um, and then I also would like to talk about, I, I've, I've put this in other terms before. Here I've written story talent versus literary talent. Um, in the past when discussing Final Fantasy 13, I've talked a lot about ideas versus execution. Similar concept, uh, so we'll talk a little bit about that and how that affected my reception of the story of Chrono Cross. Then we'll talk a little bit about the characters, um, and then we'll wrap it up for w uh, with my plans so far and how I'm going to try and cover this game, because I'm going to be going a little bit of a different direction from what I normally do with uh, like the Final Fantasy reviews. So, let's begin with my overall feelings. I really want to get this out of the way first, and I try to say this at the beginning of every one of these discussion videos, even though it kind of goes over people's heads sometimes. This is not a review. These are not my final thoughts. These are initial thoughts. And the entire reason why I do these discussion videos is so that you, the audience, can give me your ideas and enlighten me on things I might not have thought before. So you can give me a perspective maybe that I, I haven't really approached or, or looked at the game with that lens. And it can help to change my mind. I've done this for a bunch of my reviews in the past, and I'm doing it now for Cross. So if you have uh, anything you'd like to bring up as a counterpoint to anything I say today, please feel free to share in the comments. I will read it and consider it as I continue shaping my opinion of the game. But as of right now, my overall thoughts and feelings are that I think it's a very good game. Uh, there's a lot about it that I enjoy and a lot about it that I think is very well designed. Um, that being said, I think that it certainly has um, a fair number of weaknesses, uh, especially when it comes to storytelling. Um, I really do think that on the gameplay side, it has to be one of the most unique JRPGs I've ever played and it really tried to do something different with its combat and I really really appreciate that so I think it's I think it's a very good game overall um, let's segue right there into uh, getting out of the way any comparisons to Chrono Trigger or uh, expectations I might have had coming into this um, because Chrono Trigger, as most of you know, is my favorite game of all time. And uh, I hadn't played Cross ever until now. So um, this gets brought up a lot when people are debating, uh, you know, the value of Chrono Cross, uh, especially in comparison to Chrono Trigger. Um, I came into this game uh, with this idea that it, it somehow just completely betrayed the original story. At least that's what I had heard from many Trigger fans. Um, that Cross like really ruins. Uh, they didn't want to give away what happened. And let me just use this as an opportunity right now that I think about it. If you have not played Chrono Trigger or Chrono Cross, then you need to leave. <laughs> this will be full of spoilers. The entire discussion will be full of spoilers, as they usually are. So if you have not played Chrono Cross, if you have not played Chrono Trigger, then please don't watch. Um, anyways, so I had been told, without having the plot of Cross spoiled for me, I had been told by Trigger fans that uh, 
that it ha that there, there, there's an event or there's something that happens that a lot of that upsets a lot of trigger fans and so i was expecting this really really egregious like um like horrible decision that just sort of like undermined the entire plot of the original game or the characters in some way and uh i found that that wasn't the case uh for the most part at least with the information that we're actually given within chrono cross uh obviously there are you can go to the chrono compendium and other places and there are some there's some other information that you know here and there it's kind of like eh, i don't really like that but for the most part there wasn't anything that happened within the within the course of events of chrono cross that made me think like oh that's just awful they've ruined triggers plot or they've they've screwed something up so bad that i can't forgive it never felt that way about uh cross's pl plot so i went in with the expectation that it was somehow gonna just be like i don't know just something really horrible like that was gonna happen i was really happy to find that that is not the case at least for me as a huge fan of chrono trigger i wasn't looking for it to look or feel exactly like chrono trigger i was just kind of Looking for it to be a good game, maybe tie in thematically in some way to what Chrono Trigger had done. Um, okay, so that being said, um, I, despite the fact that I love Chrono Trigger, I did not hate Chrono Cross at all by any stretch of the imagination. I think it's actually a really good game. But one thing that uh, a lot of people I've seen <laughs> discussing is whether or not Chrono Trigger, or whether or not Chrono Cross, I should say, is a good sequel to Chrono Trigger. And um, that's uh, a hard question to answer. Uh, I think everyone's going to have a different answer to that, um, uh, you know, their own personal feelings on it. Um, and, and it's hard to say without sort of defining what is a good sequel. Um, I don't really have a, a strong feeling on that, on what m makes a sequel good or bad. Um, I, I would say as long as you don't, as long as you don't undermine, especially something as beloved as Chrono Trigger is, right? Uh, considered by many to be the best game of all time. As long as you don't do something in, uh, in your sequel that completely undermines or uh, makes that useless or pointless or whatever um as long as you don't do that i think that i in particular am pretty open to um you know really swinging in a new direction trying something different and especially on the gameplay side chrono cross did that i mean chrono cross's battle system is way different from chrono triggers uh, it has some similar elements like you can use uh, dual techs and that sort of thing but otherwise it's uh it's it's real different <laughs> from uh basically any other turn-based jrpg i've played and i'm totally open to that um on top of this they changed the art style i think that change in art style might have felt pretty stark to a lot of people if they had come from trigger first and were playing cross uh later um it, it really does not look and feel much like uh trigger does um the the character portraits, uh, the just overall sort of aesthetic of the game. It's a very like Islander kind of feel. Um, and then in addition to that, even the way the music is composed, and I'm not going to go over the music in detail today, but even the way the music is composed and the pace and just general feel of the game uh, is very, very, very different. And so... If you were going into Cross expecting to have a similar kind of look and feel and atmosphere, um, then yeah, it's 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 almost I can almost completely divorce the two games in my mind. Now, that being said, <laughs> Chrono Cross is definitely a sequel to Chrono Trigger, and in fact, if you haven't played Chrono Trigger or you don't know the plot of Chrono Trigger coming into it, there's probably a lot about it that will leave you feeling a bit confused. There's some knowledge of what happens in Trigger that's pretty essential to really like grasp or, or at least understand the importance of certain things that are happening in, in Chrono Cross. Um, so they are de Chrono Cross is definitely a direct sequel to Chrono Trigger. 
Uh, that being said, I find it pretty easy uh, for the most part to kind of um, separate the two when thinking uh, about them. I, I can kind of put Trigger into its own box personally and I can put Cross into its own box and sort of s I, I can almost treat them as if they are not related and enjoy this for what it is and enjoy this for what it is. Um, that's how different they feel, I guess, to me. Chrono Trigger has a lot of energy, uh, it's very fast paced, and Cross, in a lot of ways, feels almost the total opposite. Like it moves real slow. I, I, I want to avoid using the word slow as much as I can, because I think people will take that as a negative connotation. I'm not saying it's slow and, and that it's bad. More like it's, and I've used this term with the patrons that have, who, you know, played through the game with me and discussed it with me. It's a lot more chill. And maybe that fits with its kind of Islander setting, but the music and the pace of the storytelling and um, the, the overall general feel of the game is a little bit chill, slow, like it's, it's not quite as full of energy. And I think that that sort of like presentational thematic choice in a lot of ways is one of the leading factors that sort of like make Chrono Trigger fans feel alienated to the way that Chrono Cross sort of uh, goes about telling its story and, and how its world is revealed and how it's traversed and, and all of that. So, one could say that you have a sequel that feels wholly unlike the original and that that makes it a bad sequel. Um, I don't necessarily agree with that, but I can see where people might be coming from uh, who, who feel like they're just too different from each other to feel like they really belong together. Now, that being said, the premise of the story of Chrono Cross, I think, is absolutely genius as a sequel to Chrono Trigger. And that's where we're going to jump into a, a few spoilers here. So you have uh, the disaster event <laughs> at, in 12,000 BC in Chrono Trigger, um, where Lavos sends Gaspar... Uh, Melchior and Balthasar to three different time periods. Gaspar goes to the end of time. He's there underneath the, the lamp. Um, Melchior goes to, uh, is it 680 or 1,000? I think it's 680. Um, could be 1,000. No, I think it is 1,000. Uh, the time that Chrono comes from in Chrono Trigger. Someone correct me if I'm wrong with that, but I think that's where he goes. Then uh, you have uh, uh, Balthasar who goes to 2380 and he goes to sort of like this ruined world right after the after the day that in 1999 when Lavos destroys the world right so Balthazar goes there creates the the epoch the time machine used in Chrono Trigger that the party uses to basically stop the apocalypse uh the day of Lavos or whatever it is they call it and changes the future now it's a really interesting question where Lavos is stopped and the future is saved. So you no longer have a desolate future in 2300 AD. You have a thriving uh, civilization, an advanced civilization in 2300 AD. However, Balthazar was still sent into that time period from 12, uh, 12,000 BC. So instead of coming into a ruined world, he comes into one that's thriving, a thriving future. Okay, then where does that go from there? That's kind of where the beginning of the premise of Chrono, Chrono Cross's story starts. Balthazar doing time experiments, basically understands or sees that Shala, uh, again, a, a prominent character from Chrono Trigger, had merged or melded with Lavos and was essentially waiting for this time where they would devour all of uh, time and space, just the entire space-time continuum. Uh, basically just destroy everything in the universe. Um, so he puts into plan, starts doing these time experiments, and puts into plan, puts into effect, <laughs> a plan to stop that from happening. Essentially the idea there, where it's like 
Balthazar now being sent into a future that isn't ruined, like what happens there with his time experiments, is a really good starting point and, and a really awesome present uh, premise, I feel, for a sequel story to Chrono Trigger. So um, overall, I think that it's a, a fine uh, sequel to Chrono Trigger. And my problems with Cross have nothing to do with its ideas. Um, and a lot more to do with its execution. And this is kind of cycling back into a discussion that we've had in the past with Final Fantasy XIII. Um, uh, and, and it was a problem, not necessarily a problem, but a, a direction Square started to go with how they told their stories. Around the time of, uh, towards the end of the PlayStation's life cycle, and into the PS2, especially and beyond, where um, clear, concise, comprehensive storytelling was sort of moved to the side for something more ambiguous, something that would, uh, I don't know, leave a little bit more open to player interpretation or to discussion for players to try and figure out what's going on, something that would require maybe multiple playthroughs to really catch everything. Chrono Cross is the like total epitome of that idea. And many people I've talked to, they, they had to play it a couple of times to really grasp it. Um, now, it makes it really easy for you to do that because of New Game Plus. Awesome feature. Um, and, and similarly to Chrono Trigger, uh, you can unlock multiple endings by beating the game at different times. So that's all really cool. I really, really like that they have New Game Plus here. You can get through the story faster because there's a fast forward button. So it's not like you got to play the game for, you know, 50 hours, be left kind of confused and play the game again for 50 hours. You can get through it a lot faster w because of New Game Plus. But still the idea it remains that it's Square started telling these stories that were of themselves just on paper is as an outline much more complicated or complex or layered stories and then in addition to that the way in which they were delivered i i believe purposefully led to some level of confusion and uh as tetsuya nomura uh mentioned in the interview on the bonus uh, copy of um, of Advent Children, which was I think this this interview can only be found in the Japanese version. But essentially, uh, the idea is to leave things more open because they want players to talk about it with each other. They want p players to discuss and sort of like try and figure it out as a community or as a group, uh, rather than uh, nicely tying all the knots and making it a little bit easier for just an individual on one playthrough to follow. Um, and this leads into the discussion I want to have about story talent versus literary talent. And for this, I'm going to bring back some more uh, Robert McKee. <laughs> you guys will remember him. Um, I might have even played portions of this video in my Final Fantasy 13 discussion series. But the beginning of this, the first couple minutes especially, I, I really want to focus on when trying to talk about my preference for how storytelling should be handled, the way at least I think it should be, the way that I like it to be handled. Um, and he's speaking specifically about dialogue, but I think it can be applied to other things. So let's just go ahead and hear what he has to say. Because no matter how complex the psychology of your characters, no matter how emotionally compelling, how deeply meaningful your story design, if your characters cannot talk in a manner that is true to their natures, true to the conflicts they are living, true and credible to the ear of the audience, uh, to the reader. In other words, if your dialogue sucks, all your wonderful storytelling, all your character complexity will be buried under the mulch of banal dialogue. When dialogue is unconvincing, characters are unconvincing. And if the characters do not convince, the story does not convince the reader or the audience, and they turn their back on your work. 
Now he's speaking specifically here about dialogue. This was the, the major problem, in my opinion, with Final Fantasy XIII. The dialogue was terrible, and so I could not get invested. I could not believe the characters. And it did not matter how good the ideas were. I could not, I could not appreciate that to its fullest because I couldn't believe what the people were saying. I was, I was taken out of the experience. Now, I think that this same concept can apply to exposition, how exposition is given. And Chrono Cross has some really, really excellent ideas. Uh, you know, Xenogears even to some extent suffers from this, right? Like uh, one thing specifically he mentioned, it doesn't matter the, how deep the psychology. I'm convinced. Okay, right here. Because no matter how complex the psychology of your characters, no matter how emotionally compelling, how all this stuff, right? It doesn't matter how great your ideas are. <laughs> if you don't execute it well with good dialogue or how I'm going to sort of take from this idea with with really well delivered exposition then it it kind of falls apart for me and i think that chrono cross really struggles with how it delivers its key and most important exposition um and i'll get into that a little bit more in just a minute let's get back to this book there are two fundamental talents necessary to write Story talent and literary talent. Okay, so this is kind of what I had put in the agenda there as the, the real talking point. Story talent versus literary talent. Now, he'll explain more about that in a minute. But there is one side where there are, there are people who are really good with coming up with cool ideas for a world setting, for a plot, for what should happen here or there. Um, basically an outline, coming up with this outline, coming up with lore, coming up with history, coming up with really cool ideas for a world. That's storytelling. Then you have literary talent, which is the ability to take those ideas and deliver them with language that is artistically uh, expressed, that is beautiful, that is convincing and powerful and that really delivers on the potential of that great story idea and an author a good a great author needs to have both of them um for me personally i am actually a person who struggles a little bit with the first part i struggle a little bit with storytelling that's something i'm working on in my own writing is coming up with a plot, a premise, a world that is fascinating on its own. But where I have, I think, really done well in my own writing is in the literary talent part. Uh, taking a good idea and then delivering it and executing on it really well. Which is why I think um, that I really favor execution over ideas because to me, it doesn't matter how good the ideas are. If you don't execute them right, it's not going to have the weight and the impact on the audience that that it deserves. If it's some, if it's a story that's really cool, if if the ideas are so awesome, if you don't deliver on that in execution, then then those go to waste because people are not able to appreciate it as much as they should be able to. Story talent inspires the deep, original creativity of your work. But literary talent inspires dialogue. And dialogue puts the final polish on all your storytelling. So, okay, so that's, a, that's mostly what I wanted to focus on there uh, with him. And again, dialogue is really important, but I don't think that, uh, I don't think that Chrono Cross struggles on that front. I don't think its dialogue is bad. I think where it struggles in is in how it delivers the story through exposition. So, 
I want to break it down this way. This is the easiest way for me to sort of like get my point across. In Chrono Trigger, a, a story about these different eras of time that were affected by essentially the advent of Lavos. You were not just told in, uh, you know, several text boxes in a big info dump what happened in 64 million BC or 12,000 BC for that matter, which is the most important time period for the plot in Chrono Trigger. You weren't just told what happened in that time. You went there. You experienced it firsthand. You played through those events. And by experiencing those things, it is much more memorable, much easier to retain uh, the information that the storyteller is trying to give you because it's not being told, it's being shown. Um, you know, I've talked in the past in videos about show versus tell. It's, it's a really big thing for writers. You want to show the audience, not tell the audience. And Chrono Trigger shows you its story, every single piece of it. <laughs> Chrono Cross does not. And that, I feel, is the largest failing uh, with, with Chrono Cross's story and why it had almost no impact emotionally on me is because when you get to the sections that talk about some of the things I mentioned earlier, Balthazar uh, coming through to a 2380 that is not desolate and starting his research projects and being pulled back, you know, Chronopolis being pulled back into the past, Dinopolis being pulled back into the past, all of that stuff is explained in text only. You don't get to be there and witness it firsthand and play through scenarios that are set up to, to show you what happened, you are just told in enormous info dumps way at the end of the game. All of the most important information, the key information to seeing how Cross and Trigger are connected. And so that fact makes it really hard I think for a lot of people to remember all of those really complex details of Chrono Cross. I wanted to bring this up. Uh, I saw this video was posted in our Discord in the Chrono Cross discussion section. Um, here's the video. Trying to recall the plot of Chrono Cross, Sugar Punch Design Works. I will put this link in the description so that you guys can click on it. This is somebody uh, who had played Chrono Cross years and years ago when it came out and is trying to recall what the story is. <laughs> he does a pretty darn good job, probably better than I would have done, having been removed from the game that many years. But it does serve to prove a point, especially if you haven't played Chrono Trigger at all, which he had not and has not still. It's just a lot of stuff to remember, and I, I believe the one reason why it is hard to recall and why it is hard to keep things straight is because, for the most part, all that information, there's no visual experience where you get to see how it happened. It's just text. It's just words explaining it to you. I just feel like that's such a shame. Um, and it's not as satisfying for me personally. Uh... It's, it's not the way that I like to have a story unfold and be revealed, uh, especially the key, most important parts. Um, you definitely want to be there with the characters. Imagine, let's say, The Lord of the Rings, the films, right? You have, um, you have the opening scene which shows that war be uh, where the elves and men unified and they fought against Sauron at the... At the base of Mount Doom and uh, the ring was cut off of, um, of Sauron's hand. And let's say, because you have Galadriel, I believe, who's doing a, a narration over the top of that scene and explaining it. Imagine if she, we were just sitting there in Lothlorien and she was just explaining it to us, just telling us what happened. And we had no visual representation of that shown 
you know, how much harder or how much I'll put it the opposite way. How much easier is it to really um, retain and understand and remember information when the two are giving us hand in hand? There's someone explaining it and we're also seeing what they're explaining. Similarly, later in the movie, when uh, Elrond is speaking to Gandalf in Rivendell, and he says, I was there, Gandalf, I was there 3,000 years ago, or whatever it was, um, and then it cuts, and it shows us Elrond leading uh, you know, up to the mountain and telling him to cast the ring into the fire. You know, we see it. As well as we were told. Imagine if that scene had just been Elrond and Gandalf just talking. Just having dialogue back and forth and explaining what happened. It's just... It's just really important, in my opinion, in good storytelling. Especially if you want people to remember. You want them to really attach a face to a character. You want them to attach um, visually to an event. It's much more memorable that way, right? So, Chrono Cross, in opposition to Chrono Trigger does not take you <laughs> to these events and show you them. It lets you walk through a factory or, or a, sort of like an advanced uh, facility and you sort of just are told like what happened here in the past and why it was important. And, and it's all given to you in humongous dumps instead of at like a steady pace over the course of the game. And... I think that, that that is the leading problem because the story of Chrono Cross is not that hard to understand when it's been explained in a way that's comprehensible. This is where I want to bring up these videos by Terra Corrupt. Uh, these will be in the description as well. I suggest you watch his Chrono Trigger timeline explained just to, to brush up on your knowledge of Chrono Trigger. But then after that, the Chrono Cross timeline explained. And then this is the third part of the series, Time Travel and Theories of Chrono Trigger Explained. When this person, someone who is good at narrating and explaining a story, when this person explains it, it, is, it makes perfect sense. There's a couple of things here and there that I think might be plot holes or they're a little too ambiguous it'd be nice if there was more detail in explaining how this or that works but i understood immediately because and that's what the art of storytelling is okay because again you have story talent someone who can come up with the great ideas but literary talent the the job of an excellent storyteller is how the information is given, at what pace, at what point in the story, uh, how we see, how it's explained, what the performances are. This is all directorial stuff, the director, right? The storyteller. The true art of storytelling is to deliver all of that information in a way that the audience feels like they're following it, they're 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 learning about it in exciting new ways um you, you withhold information to be uh, revealed later but only in cases where it makes sense to do so not just to create artificial uh mystery or whatever when someone who is great at telling stories they have a great literary talent when they deliver the story of chrono cross it's awesome but when you have somebody who withholds all this information to the very, very end of the game and then just dumps it all out at you at once through dialogue, 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 and you, you're not seeing any of it or how it unfolded, it becomes, one, easy to start getting confused, uh, harder to retain the information, and in addition, I just don't find it to be all that satisfying. That's essentially why, for me, the story of Chrono Cross did not have, like... There was a couple moments where it's like, oh, wow, that was crazy. Like, when Surge and Lynx switch bodies, and then Surge... You see Surge's portrait, and he's actually speaking now. You know, for a, what had been a silent protagonist the whole time. Uh, the entire idea uh, with, the, with the dragons here, and, and the switching of bodies, and now you're playing as Lynx for, like, a gigantic portion of the game. 
great idea. I mean, that moment had a lot of impact. The, you know, some of the stuff with Miguel and seeing the Chrono Trigger characters, it was like, oh man, what's going on here? Um, and then going up through, uh, I forget the name of the facility, but where you're learning about Chronopolis and uh, Balthasar's time experiments and how that all went wrong. Um, like, that's another portion of the game where I was pretty engaged, but overall it's just like I didn't feel like emotionally attached uh, and, and invested in the story. And I, I believe that the reason for that, as I explained, was how the exposition was given. Um, and that leads me right into uh, kind of my last part of the discussion here, my thoughts on the characters. There's only a handful of them out of the 40, what is it, 2 or 46 or however many playable characters in the game. There's a very small number of them that really have any character development or feel like they have any relevance in the story at all. This is a problem that cannot really be solved. You cannot have excellent character development for 42 characters. So really, it becomes a lot more about it's just like a novelty thing. It's like a, a collector. It really, I think, would appeal to collectors. You know, people who like Pokemon, for instance, they like to catch all of the Pokemon or uh, card collectors or that sort of thing. You, you want to, like, get ev everything. It's a, a, maybe a sort of a completionist attitude. And uh, that's, that's fine. I mean, I, I think that that can be very enjoyable for a lot of people. But for me, what it ended up creating was just, like, tons and tons and tons of just total throwaway characters that had no relevance. I had no desire to bring them with me in the party because what relevance do they have to the story? Um, and along those same lines, I feel like while the game had a pretty excellent book with its plot, with Surge uh, sort of experiencing that sort of dimensional shift and, and coming into another world and learning that you know, like no one recognizes him there. I feel like while that was a cool plot hook, they didn't really do a ton um, to get me emotionally invested with the character. Because I can imagine like how horrifying an event that would be if I woke up and I went into my parents' house and they didn't recognize me. Uh, none of my friends recognized me. And they were all talking to me as if I was a total stranger. And I had learned that apparently I had died as a young kid and no one knew who I was. Um, that would be awful. An awful, awful, awful experience. And the, the strong desire to figure out what happened and get back home again, I think could be a strong emotional hook. And I feel like uh, one of the characters that could have stood to have a lot stronger of a connection to the game's story, and especially to the main protagonist, is Lena. Because in that first stretch of the game, with the dialogue that she has, it makes it seem like they were very, very close, Lena and Serge. And um, they talked about their future together. They, they did all this setup with her and Serge as being like these extremely close people, uh, obviously a romantic interest, and uh, really, really built that up and established something good. And then Lena, through the rest of the game, almost, she, almost as if she doesn't exist. Like she just has no relevance at all for the rest of the game. And I felt like that was a big missed opportunity because that could have served as Serge's like driving motivation to get back to his own world and be with Lena again. Um, and they sort of just threw that character by the wayside right after the beginning of the game. Um, they do have some decent uh, character development for many of the Acacia Dragoons. Uh, Karsh and Dario and Riddell and Glenn, like their story is, is pretty great. I liked the little uh, subplot with uh, Radius or Radius, I'm not sure how to pronounce his name. Uh, the whole like Masamune plot between both of those sets of characters. Um, I, I think that those were really effective for those characters. And Kid has good character development too. Um, obviously, you go back to Luca's house slash orphanage or whatever was going on there um and, and so there's some some good stuff there with her 
you learn more about Serge's father and you know what happened in his childhood and stuff like that but beyond that it's like there's just all of these characters and uh, I mean f the majority of them I have no emotional connection to and my ideas align a lot with Robert McKee's in that if I'm not interested in the people if I'm not if I don't believe in the people if I if I'm not um it, again it doesn't matter how great the ideas are if I'm not invested in the people, if I'm not believing in the people, if I don't care about the people and what's happening, then it's really hard to stay connected and to really, really care what's going to happen. And I will say that through the majority of my playthrough of Chrono Cross, I felt like I was doing it because, you know, I, I have, I'm going to make this video for the channel and, you know, I got to get through the game it's one of those games that's been suggested that people want to know my thoughts on and so I got to play through it but I I wasn't like terribly motivated to keep playing it I I was not attached to what was happening or or any of the people in the game and um that sort of started to change towards the end in Chronopolis and with all the stuff as it sorts to start coming together at the end it was like oh wow this is really great information why didn't they cover this earlier and get me interested and hooked and... Anyways, uh, I'm, I'm drifting a little bit away from characters, but I really feel like um, the game has too many characters, and I wish that it would have featured a small handful of uh, a main cast and just really worked on uh, developing those characters, attaching me to those characters. I would much prefer that, and I do much prefer when games do that, over this like collect-a-thon idea of having tons and tons and tons of characters to get so um yeah those are my kind of initial impressions of this storytelling in the game all of that being said i know a lot of people are not gonna like what i what i'm saying here again i'll repeat these are not final thoughts it's not my final opinion it's not a review it's just my initial thoughts. If you want to give me perspective, uh, f f you know, from your side of the table, if you love this game, I'm willing to hear that. And I'm also willing to change my mind. I've done it many times in the past. I did it on Final Fantasy 13, done it on Final Fantasy 8, done it on Final Fantasy uh, 5, I've done it on Xenogears, I've done it on all these games I reviewed. I've had these discussion videos and a lot of my ideas have been changed. Uh, my mind's been changing a lot of things. So if you want to try and change my mind on something, feel free to do it. I, I will listen to anything you have to say. I also want to sort of run by you guys that I'm planning on changing how I'm going to cover games uh, in the future. Um, I don't know where or when I've mentioned this. Maybe it was just on Discord. But I, I've kind of gotten to a point where the way I have been structuring these videos it's not sustainable they keep getting longer and longer and longer almost an hour long my final fantasy 13 review is right and i just can't sustain that model i want to make something more in the 10 to 15 minute range and i don't want to have to cover every pro and con of an entire game i'd rather focus more on uh capturing the essence of the game um, if you have uh, any thoughts on that, I'm I'm more of the mind right now where I don't want to cover a game by talking about every single thing that's in it, but rather focusing on the things that it does really, really well and uh, maybe digging into some things that maybe you hadn't thought of. So that's what I'm thinking about doing for Chrono Cross. Uh, let me know what you guys think of that. If you hate the idea, please let me know. <laughs> Um, but I think it'll be better because the videos will be shorter, easier to get through, and uh, they'll be easier for me to turn around, too. I'll be able to make these a lot quicker and cover more games, too. So, um, anyways, that's it for the first discussion video on Chrono Cross. Thank you for watching. I'm looking forward to reading your thoughts in the comments. And uh, stay tuned on Wednesday. We'll have a new podcast. Have a great week. Peace out.